Hi, everybody. It's Yvonne DeVito, and I'm here today with another Scratchings and Sniffings Out Loud podcast about allergies with Dr. Grace and Dr. Larry. So, Dr. Larry, did you want to start? So, Grace, off? moving over into food allergy, what are the more common ingredients um, that dogs and cats are allergic to, and why those ingredients? Generally, when an animal has a food allergy, they have it to the protein in that food. In other words, say beef, chicken, pork, whatever the protein is, it could be, and it can be lamb or venison or whatever, it's typically the protein component. But there's protein in a lot of things. So, for instance, there's protein in corn. And so if an animal is allergic to corn, they are allergic to the protein component of that. But the most common allergies are to the proteins that we commonly think of as meat-type proteins. So beef, chicken, poultry, those are really common protein sources. Right. And I think beef is the number one allergen for dogs, food allergen. How do you discover that your dog is allergic to beef? Well, uh, it's not as easy as figuring out if they're allergic to pollens and grains because there is no good skin test for that. And there is, there actually is no good any kind of laboratory test for it. You have to get be suspicious of it with the symptoms. In other words, dogs either having GI problems or skin problems that are all year round and not seasonal. And it's sort of like an elimination thing. Then you eliminate the, all the common proteins from the diet and then gradually add them back in and see which ones your dog reacts to. So it's tricky. It's it's not an easy thing to diagnose. So Grace, then I think people assume, I don't think people know that beef is like the number one allergen. Most people that I talk to, most consumers, I think, think it has something to do with grains like corn or soy or wheat in particular. You know, I hear those three a lot. So I know that there are allergies to those substances, but they would be lower down on the uh, potential cause list than something like beef or chicken. Yes, they're way down in the list, way down. So there are not really that many animals actually allergic to those grains, mainly because they're not, the protein components of them are not in a real high concentration in the food. And and animals tend to become allergic to the proteins that they're exposed to the most and are in the highest concentration. I know with certain inhaled allergies, you can do skin testing, you can do blood tests, Mm -hmm. but with food allergy, don't you have to go to an elimination diet to truly diagnose it? You do, and there's two ways to do that. Let's say your veterinarian suspects that your dog is allergic to some protein in its its current diet. What you have to do is, uh, there's two ways. You can either do a home-cooked meal where you pick a protein that your dog has never had before and carbohydrate that your dog has never had before. So sometimes you might go with venison and potato, for instance. Pick, you know, just a two-ingredient thing, and you feed that to your dog for several weeks to hopefully get them to a normal state where they're no longer allergic. And then you gradually introduce different proteins to see which ones they react to. Now, there's an easier way to do that. You can buy commercial foods that have either uh, unusual proteins like duck or venison in them, or a diet that has a special type of protein that animals are not allergic to. Right. And they can't be on any drugs. They can't be on any corticosteroids, for instance. Or no, because that would mask it. Yeah. So I know that we have the PVDHA formula, the hypoallergenic formula. Can you describe that and how that works a little bit? Sure. Normally, when, when animals become allergic to a protein, they become allergic to that intact protein molecule, and that's what the body recognizes and reacts to. What HA, hypoallergenic, has done is use a soy protein and actually partially digested that soy so that it's broken down into smaller molecules that basically the animal does not recognize anymore. So they don't, it's not the large molecule, it's a pre-digested molecule. So you can give that to an animal and they don't react to it. Even if they were allergic to soy, they would not react to the protein in that particular diet. It's broken down into smaller pieces that are less allergenic to the dog. Right. And it's it's actually the same type of protein that's used in infant formulas where the infant is maybe allergic to regular milk. This is the mm-hmm. soy type of product that is given to those allergic infants. 
food allergies can manifest themselves as either skin problems, itchy skin, or as GI tract problems with just sort of a chronic sensitive stomach and GI tract. Right. I know diarrhea. that uh, Alice, the dog we've written about on the blog a lot, has uh, probably some form of inflammatory bowel disease. And whenever you switch her off of the HA diet, she returns to her vomiting symptoms. And so you just got to keep her on that. Yeah, yeah. Some animals are on it long term, and other animals can use HA just sort of as the test diet and then gradually be able to wean them onto another formula maybe that they can tolerate. Sounds great. Well, Dr. Grace and Dr. Larry, thank you for this podcast today, and we will talk again soon about allergies. Sounds good. Right. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.